Can you see them? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. OK, um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak today. And my talk will be different to the two previous talks. This is just hands on. I will explain about my experience, how I provided and connected to the students uh, um, by a virtual lab experience during this COVID-19 times we are all in. And hopefully that will be interesting. I don't know how much it will be applicable for everyone, but that's was sort of my way of dealing with the situation. So I come from a division of natural sciences, a former school of biosciences, and I'm involved in um, uh, uh, teaching a module BI836, which is a part of the must taught master program. It's called Practical and Applied Research Skills for Advanced Biologists. There are a few elements to these modules. There are seminars, which is based on a discussion with the students, a lot of students' preparation and uh, performance. Um, they are bioinformatic workshops, which we run online all the time, not just this year. But there is also a practical, a practical in which we, in five days with the students, modify Baker's yeast genome by using CRISPR-Cas9 technology. This technology has won a Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2020, so it's very modern, is very, um, uh, um, very strong and very nice uh, technology, which is excellent for students to learn during their master's degree. Usually, this uh, practical, the structure of the practical course is that we do five full laboratory days over two and a half months. So we start end of September or beginning of October and we finish pretty much beginning of December. Now, you cannot modify genome in five days in the lab. There's a lot of preparation in between, which students don't see, but we supply them with ready materials and we do in between little uh, experiments. However, they will teach them, they, they, what they gain is a practical experience of modern molecular and biology and its application to solve research problems. So every day in the lab, they do have to solve the problem, applying different techniques and learning. Um, there is also one pre-lab seminar. So in a, at the very beginning of the term, I meet students, we discuss the uh, course of the lab practical. I give them as many details as I can. I tell them where to find them, etc. But that's all what we usually did before until this year. What did we face this year? We had distant learners, a lot of some international postgraduate students who were not able to arrive in UK on time for the start of the term, but they had to start to studying. There was no problem for seminar or other modules. However, the only prob problem was face to face practical. Um, we also had self isolating students. Since this course runs over two and a half months, you can imagine that lots of students would self isolate, come back or self isolate again or maybe come back later. There were also students who had to care for their family. They didn't have the child care. They could not attend the labs. And again, there would be maybe one or two days off which they would not be able to be in a lab and they didn't want to miss anything. So I had to deal with all these distant learners this this um, this term. We also had completely new set of rules for laboratory, laboratory safety, as such as a two meter distance, we were not able to gather at the beginning of the lab session, which I usually do and I usually talk to them at the beginning and explain what's the course of today, what are we doing, where to find the materials, what will be supplied, etc. We had no chance to do this this year. They also one way walking distance in the lab, which means that the whole day student have to stay on their place on their bench and they needed to be supplied with everything they needed. We carried the sample to the incubators, etc. It was 100 times more difficult than usually it is. Unfortunately, it did cut lots of um, performance for students, didn't teach them independency, which we aim to gain in this practical. However, we had to stick to it. There was no other way the practical could have run. The other thing was a no face to face seminar, which I could come and talk about the outcomes of the practical we had to do online. So what have I implemented? 
as a consequence of all this, what was the new? I sort of adapted for online delivery practical. It's um, what I have introduced a series of online pre-lab sessions, and I would run them a day before the lab work. And that would be online on MS Teams. Usually I dedicate one hour to it, but it was never one hour. It was always longer because I would show them slides explaining the structure of the day, experimental design. We could also discuss the result of the previous day. What did we gain? What will be the follow up, etc. I would ask. Uh, we also did a troubleshooting. We looked why did it work, what would have been done in order to make it work better, etc. So we also had discussion and Q&A session. I answered all possible questions. As I said, it always took longer than an hour, but that seems to work well. They panicked a lot at the beginning. I must say students were really concerned. How are they going to gain the lab experience if they're studying online or if they can't ask the question in the lab? What are they doing, etc. So the first the beginning, maybe first couple of days, they were quite stressful and I could see the anxiety. I could see lots of questions coming through. However, it subsided later on. I saw much more confidence in the students in my online discussions, but also in the lab, despite all the restriction and conditions we, we had to work in. So what, what else did I do was a series of practical days webinars. What have I done? I made videos in which I would put a slide with a plan for a day. Again, explain shortly the experiments. I would include the videos which I have done in the lab. I filmed the students. So originally we thought we can stream what happens in the lab on the MS Teams. Unfortunately, the technology wasn't there. That didn't work. And maybe there was a blessing because how can we stream the experiments in which you do something for five or ten minutes and then you have to wait for one hour one hour for the incubation. The people on the other end would have to sit in front of a, a computer when nothing really happened and there was no talking available. So what I decided to do, I did a short movies on my iPhone for students performing experiments. I also asked students if they would like doing for themselves. And I had a couple of very talented and very um, enthusiastic students who did lots of short videos explaining what they are doing very cleverly, showing with their phone, their uh, hands or their tubes or the incubators. It was amazing. And they supplied me with those short videos, which I incorporated in the webinar. And at the end of the day, I, at the end of the webinar, I would do a summary slides with uh, outcomes of the day and what actually we aimed to get and where do we stand in the course of the practical. I Three introduced minutes left, Nadia. All right. I introduced additional uh, question and answer sessions, which were very popular as well. And I'll hurry up. So what were the aims? The aims was to deliver the core material of the practical to the distant learner who panicked a lot, who wanted to be included. And what was not the, the least important was engagement with the learner. As I said, there was a, a not as much as get engagement in the lab as it used to be before. I, I didn't talk, I did, couldn't explain so much. And we could do all of that part online. And that seems to work well. It took a time, but uh, as a previous speaker saw that the first time you don't hear them speaking, but no, they do turn on the microphones. They they turn on the cameras even. They talk to me. I know them by names now. So what are the outcomes? We, I Hopefully, I provided students with a practical experience, which was partly online and partly in online delivered format. I also provided the support in preparing the practical report from research research paper and that's outcome of the of the module which is organization and presentation of experimental data interpretation of biological data and on my last slides I included the snapshot of those webinars so you can see how from day to day it gets slightly more complicated in in a course of the practical and explanation of the experiments what we were doing there's a snapshot of me filming students you can see my face here because sometimes at the end of the day i'll go to the lab and film myself if i realize that we missed an important part or important explanation and on the top right corner 
there is a star the Hans, Hans, Tanis Hansen is my student who was very enthusiastic on filming herself and she said she had a lot of experience because she's filming her in a video gaming and she was brilliant so lots of videos of her were included into my webinars and that's the way I uh, hopefully supported my students during this storm, which was difficult and uh, um, providing them face to face laboratory practical such as a postgraduate practical was complicated and hopefully we um, supported them in that and, and did uh, something which was new, but it was useful for everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you so much. Um, and I would just like to say uh, that uh, to everyone else that I know how much work Nadia's put into this module and how much time she's spent on it. So I just wanted to say uh, well done. And I know your students have benefited from this. So thank you very much. They're lucky to have you. Um, thank you okay. very much. Thank you very much, Phil. And I am still learning because, you know, day by day, I still have to learn how to make the videos. And, you know, when I was a teenager, I wanted to be a film director, not the actor, but the film director. Here I am and I do everything. I do filming, I do editing, I put my voice over the uh, over the movies and lots of other stuff. So um, hopefully it's all for a good purpose and students have benefited from that. That's great. Um, I think we've got time for one quick question. Um, I think my colleague Steve Ganfield is going to ask that if that's OK. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Nadia. Um, Hazel Lobo's just raised uh, quite an interesting question with us. Um, were there? Any, did you find any issues of digital poverty amongst the students? I presume in terms of do, you know, the, the devices that they had access to, the personally owned, that kind of thing. And if so, how did you sort of mitigate and manage that? All right. Um, uh, as the beginning, uh, MS Teams for everyone was a digital a jungle. We all had to deal with that. And yes, we pressed many times uh, wrong buttons. Uh, the sound in my computer didn't work. And I thought I messed up my first seminars, pre-lab seminars. It worked at the end. I never had complained from my students that they could not watch the video on their device or they struggle with the technology. There was a lot of question regarding what are we doing, technology, understanding, because due to the nature of this master uh, program, we have students with no lab skills. And usually this is a huge challenge in the lab because they have never deal with any model organism with a micro pipette with which they don't understand what Eppendorf tube is and any equipment in the lab is new it's like a museum for them imagine having all this having them online and explaining them lots of those students come from abroad and they have usually medical background and uh, they, they, those distant learning there were among them those who have no love experience i know that two students decided not to participate in the storm and maybe postpone it for next year because they could not deal with that but i never had any queries about Oh, I can't watch the videos or the technology doesn't work for me. I really it's a huge advantage for us that the generation of our students is much ahead of us. And actually that supported the, the, the thing we try to implement. It seems to work with them. They can play this video on day on their phones, which I struggle. Honestly, I need my computers, but they seem to have no problems with that. We had many other issues. I had the anxiety attack of the students in the lab due to the due to the situation that the first day she couldn't deal with that. And that was new to me. I never had to deal with that in, in the lab conditions. It's we settled the situation and, and, and my hands were keep shaking until the evening that day. So there were any possible other complications, but not the one which you mentioned, interestingly. Thank and you. if I would have any question, I would probably go to feel straight away with <laughs> <laughs> and ask how to deal with this. That, that's what I'm here for. So uh, that's fine. Occupied, Nadia. Got to keep him occupied. <laughs> Thank you. I think there might be a couple of questions in the chat, uh, Nadia. So if you could answer any of those, yeah, right. that would be fantastic. Thank you. If you Thank could you. stop uh, stop presenting as well. Thank you.